guys, welcome back to another episode of All the Mod 6 with your old pal, Wizards Game. Uh, so today we're going to actually be getting into some more automation. So we're going to be automating Botania, and we're going to definitely automate the Patrick Star. That's going to be amazing. I'm going to show you guys how to do that. It's not that hard, and it will take a bit of crafting. We'll have to get some a whole bunch of stuff from Create. And um, but we're going to get that going. We're going to automate as much of it as we can, and it's going to be awesome. And I know you guys are going to enjoy it. So let's get into it. All right, guys, welcome back. So as you can see here, I've got some Botania automation set up using the botanical machines. Um, so we're just going to get into this and kind of talk about uh, how it works. So we've got um, the mechanical runic altar, we've got the industrial agglomeration factory, we've got a mechanical mana pool, and we've got mechanical daisies. So as you remember, probably in a previous episode, we had these daisies out here where we were sort of just um, dropping logs and stone around it to get living wood and living uh, rock. This thing does basically the same exact thing, but it's automated. So I can go into my refined storage crafting grid, and I can um, search for living, and we'll go to the craftables. So let's say we want to make one living wood, so we can just hit start on this guy. And it's going to deploy a piece of wood in here that we have specified in our pattern, which is Zelkova log. And you could actually create a pattern for any type of log that you want, or multiple logs, or you know however you'd like to do that. Um, and it's it's going to do basically the same thing that it did when we placed the log around the pure white daisy. And once it's done, it's going to um, put it back in our refined storage. So underneath here, I've got a importer. And so it's just going to um, import that back in. And same thing for each of these. They all have the importer underneath them. Uh, so for our mana pool, same type of thing. Now it's automated. So we've got our... Um, Mana Steel, Mana Pearl, Mana Diamond, and Mana Emerald in here that we can auto-craft. Uh, and here we've got our uh, Terra Steel Ingot and our Alf Steel Ingot. Those can be auto-crafted now. And then right now, the only rune that we have in here is going to be the Massive Wills. And that might be the only one we care about um, in order to craft the ATM Star. Now we may actually add more runes there later if we need to. And there are other botanical machines that we can add to if we need those as well, but I don't think we're going to need them. So the main reason that we, we have these is just to be able to get uh, Terra Steel ingots primarily, because when we set up our Woot Factory to farm the Gaia boss, uh, we're going to want to do that in order to get um, a lots of, ma of uh, massive wills and, and the will runes. Um, so this will allow us to basically automate that, and we'll be able to just kind of um, have a process set up to where it will automatically send um, the, the Gaia Terra Steel ingots into the Woot Factory to keep that running. So that's pretty much how that works. Um, uh, over here we've got some mana automation, and I know it's not pretty. Uh, I'm sure there's a better way to do this, but this is the way I have it set up for right now. Um, can always uh, change this later and maybe make it look a bit nicer and streamline it a little more, but it is what it is, so it works. Um, so coming out of our mana battery, we've got a redstone comparator, which is set into subtract mode. And all that's going to do is send a signal out from the uh, mana battery, which is going to be a 15 as long as the mana battery is full. So when the mana battery gets down to about 40%, the, uh, it's going to basically stop sending a redstone signal. And the reason for that is because right next to it, we've got a potentiometer from Draconic Evolution. And this is basically subtracting about five, about the number five um, from the redstone signal. So if it's coming out as a 15, once it leaves the comparator, it's actually going to be a 10. So basically, when the mana battery gets down to about 40% of it of being full, it's going to stop sending a redstone signal from the comparator. And this um, NOT gate is basically here to invert the signal. So when the redstone signal stops coming out here, it's going to invert the signal. So it's going to create a redstone signal here. And then we've got an AND gate. 
And what that's doing is it's combining the signal from our cyclic item, item detector and um, the signal coming from the mana battery. And if both of those signals are on, it's going to send a signal over here to um, a modular router, which is configured with a couple of flinger modules. And we could take a look at one of these guys. Uh, basically, all it is is set to be at front. We have our speed, which is how fast it's going to fling the item out of the module, which in this case is going to be another star. And then we have our sort of pitch and yaw, which is basically configured so that this this guy is going to um, send it to the farthest flower. Now, one thing I have noticed about these is that if you put them right next to each other, it's going to use the settings from the first flinger module, and the settings from this guy will not get executed properly. I think it's because it's just too fast. So if you put a couple of spaces in between here, that seems to make it work better. Um, and so, yeah, we've got our um, Wither Aconite flowers here, and this item detector is basically configured to the equal. And if we look at the, um, the area that it's basically detecting, it is right here. So all this is doing is checking to see if there are any uh, nether stars currently deployed. And if there are no stars deployed, it's going to send a redstone signal here to the AND gate. So basically, the, um, the short version is that when the mana battery falls below 40% and the item detector is not detecting any stars on the surface, it's going to send a redstone signal to the router here, which is going to deploy two stars onto these flowers. Now I can kind of do a quick demonstration here. Um, let me actually turn this off for right now. Take this out and we'll just put two stars in there. And you'll see how this is going to work when I turn that off or set it to ignore. There it goes. Okay. <laughs> It's not a great demonstration, it happens really fast, but you can see that it doesn't precisely put them in the right place, but it puts them in close enough the right place. So it puts a star on each flower and that's all we really want it to do. So that works. So we're gonna keep this in redstone high mode and we're going to put this filter to nether stars. And yeah, so that's all we really need to do. So that is our automated Botania and of course, we can expand this and add more things to it. Uh, again, I know it's not very pretty, um, and there's definitely some things I could do to clean this up, but uh, it, it's, it, it's doing the job that's, that I needed to do. So that's good enough. I think, so over here, uh, you did notice that I just kind of cleaned out all the old Botania stuff because we don't need it anymore. Um, over here, I think I'm actually going to set up our auto enchanting process, and it is going to take up quite a bit of room, so it'll probably take up that whole space. Uh, but we're not going to get into that today. So I think that's going to be everything for the Botania automation. Uh, I think the next thing I'm going to be working on is the create um, star, basically, to craft the, the Patrick star. So I'm going to get started on that, and I'll check in when I've made some progress. All right, guys. So before we get started on the uh, create stuff, I wanted to just kind of show you real quick that I also went ahead and moved the... Um, the latex processing setup that we had over in our old dwelling. And I set this up here so that it's fully automated. We have our uh, plastic or rubber um, pellets sort of coming out of here of our latex processing chamber. We also have a couple of patterns um, here for our uh, dissolution chambers. We have latex coming in from this latex process back here. And for right now, I've just got a tank of pink slime. We've got quite a bit of it, so that should last a while. Eventually, I will probably have the pink slime going into a fluid storage disk and refined storage, and then just have that sort of automated into here. I don't think we're ever going to probably need that much of it, um, because we're not going to be crafting a whole lot of industrial foregoing type things. Uh, and then this router is just here to um, basically pull the items out of each of these things and put it into refined storage. Uh, so I do have a pattern set up to basically like craft the um, advanced black hole tank. And that is something that I will find useful for storing fluids just because it has a pretty high fluid storage rate. 
then over here, the other thing that I did with um, our uh, aura processing was I just went ahead and set up an exporter here. And I'm just automatically exporting all of the ores that we currently have into this process. And we didn't have a whole lot. So I thought it would be good to just go ahead and turn those into ingots and just let that run. Uh, it is worthy of noting that this does use a lot of power. So having that run full time uh, can put a strain on your power. Um, so you can see here it's using anywhere from maybe like 10 to 30k FE per tick. Uh, so that's almost all from just the uh, ore processing system here from Mechanism. Mechanism is a very power hungry mod, but it does give you a way to offset that using like the fusion reactor, which we actually will get into later. We'll be able to generate probably around 400 million FE per tick uh, when we get to that point. But um, for right now, uh, this is our setup. So anyway, I thought I would show you that and uh, now I'm gonna get back to the create stuff. All right, guys, we've got the initial crafters that we're gonna need in order to set up the star. So I think we're going to put this right here. It's going to need three spaces in the middle, I think. So one, two, three. One, two, three. And then we're going to go one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Then we're going to do row across the top starting from right here. And then that's going to shrink down one more right here. And then we're going to have across the top here, like so. And I think that comes out over one. I feel like I did something. Yeah, I did. And this needs to go right here. Is that right? No, there's one missing right here, too. I think that's... Yes, that's correct. So now we need another row across the top. So we're going to have to use uh, the wrench from Create to kind of uh, straighten this out and get everything pointing in the right direction. And then we've got two on the top, and then one there. Hey! So what I love about making this right now is that it's kind of serves as like a motivator. It basically gives us a visual to shoot for. Um, we know what we need to do in order to, um, you know, kind of get to the next stage. And obviously our ultimate goal is going to be to make a bunch of ATM stars. And so we're going to try to do that uh, as quickly as we can. So yeah, this is uh, pretty awesome that we got this set up. So now we just need to kind of turn all of these things in the right direction. And this needs to point down. This needs to go here. This needs to go this way. Uh, this can probably go up. And I think actually this can go that way as well. Here. Just want to make sure these are all uniform. That actually looks pretty good. Yep. Nice. So we've got this thing set up now. Now we're basically going to need to power it. So that's going to be the next step. And what I'm going to have to do is make some more of these crafters and find some way to power that. And um, because we won't be able to power it with the um, the, the uh, electric electronic motor because uh, we have to craft that first and so we'll probably have to use like a water wheel or something um, the electric motor I think is what we want yep this guy so we'll have to set up a 12 crafters in this configuration 
And these are going to be the required components for it. And it's going to give us this. But in order to power these, we're probably going to need a couple of water wheels uh, or something like that in order to get this going. So I will get started on that. And once I've got all the components, then uh, we'll walk through the setup. All right, guys. So we're going to get this set up here. So uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and probably put down a couple, uh, maybe like four of these water wheels. I'm going to put them not like that. Um, put them like this. Two, three, four. Okay, so we're going to want the water running this way. Uh, so now I will need to kind of clear out some of this space. I don't think it's actually required. Maybe it is. Uh, but we want this to look nice, at least. Nice-ish. So now we will need to get this cleared out. Try not to wreck our whole base in the process. Okay. Uh, so now we've got that. And uh, we'll put this back here. That there. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and use... Actually, we'll put this back here. And that there. I think that should be okay. And we're going to use some dark glass. Um, now, one thing we could do is actually try to use magma to increase the amount of force we're getting, which is kind of a trick you can do. But I don't think, honestly, we're going to need that much force out of this. I think four water wheels will give us enough. And if it doesn't, then we'll have to come up with you know some other solution. So we'll just kind of figure it out as we go. I'm certainly not a, an expert at anything in this game. <clears throat> Excuse me. Especially not create. So, um, okay, so that's going to be good there. I think we'll have to probably bring this up a couple more. I don't know if I have enough glass. Okay. And put this here. Okay, how are we looking? This is kind of in an awkward spot. I'm really not liking where it's at. I may have to move it. Okay, so now we've got that. We want the water to come over the top. I'm kind of thinking maybe we will do this. And then we've got our Emperor's Chalice here, which is uh, our infinite water bucket. I think um, we can just do that. And, okay, it didn't, didn't like something. We did something terribly wrong. I think maybe it was because this was here, and this other side also probably needs to be broken as well. So maybe if we put a row of glass behind him. Okay, that seems to be helping. And now if we take these other water wheels, we can put them like so. That somehow doesn't look right where I wanted it to go. That's fine. Uh, let me grab this. It's a good thing these don't uh, damage me. Is this actually like in the glass? Kind of looked like it was. And it was still working. Just strange. Okay, uh, I'm gonna put another piece of glass right here and see if that works. Oh, hey. Okay. All right, we got some got some flowage, and uh, that might actually be enough. Um, I think I can close this off. Keep the water out. There we go. Okay. Not great, but not terrible either. We can clean this up a little bit. Okay. All right, so now we're going to need a shaft coming out of here. And before we do that, we're going to put this in the shape that we need. So let's take a look at at create. And we want the electric motor. 
So we're going to have 3 on the bottom, then 5, then 3, then 1. So we're going to put 3 on the bottom, then 5, and 3, and 1. Okay, now we need uh, some. Sh we need a shaft, and we're going to need to bring that out here with probably a gear. So let's go to at create, and we need the shaft. A couple of these. We're going to get eight for that. We need some of these. I did set up auto crafting for some of these uh, create items, so that'll be. Help speed things up a little bit. Uh, so we got the shafts, and now we're going to need some gears. We got andesite encased shaft. At least just encased shaft gearbox, vertical gearbox, clutch gear shaft. I think we're going to grab um, a gearbox and. Why can't we auto craft this? Oh, because this one uses andesite. Okay. I didn't set up auto crafting for that one, and I should have. That's okay. Just craft it real quick so we got that. So now we're going to need two more of those. So let's we'll click start on that. And now we should have enough to make a couple of gearboxes. We might need more than one. So I'm going to grab that. And let's see if we can do it like this. So we're going to put a shaft out of here. We're going to put a gearbox. We're going to put another shaft here. This might be rotating the wrong way. I'm going to put a gearbox here. And we're going to put a shaft here. And then we just need, I think, a cog right there. Cog wheel. So I'll just craft a couple of these. And we've got some of those now. And then I think we can just put him right there. And looks like it's working to me. Now, whether or not that's actually going to be enough force is going to be another question. So let's go ahead and try to make one. Um, let's go ahead and set all of the outputs to a single point. That should be good. And now we want to get all the ingredients for this. So let's look at, at create. And we want the electric motor. So we're going to need six of these brass sheets. We need a capacitor. We don't ha have any of these plates. But I think we can make them real quick. And I could actually automate this. Um, I don't know that I need to, well, we're going to need a bunch of these, so I think that's probably going to be the trick. Uh, we're going to need this as well. And is there any other way to make these other than with these wire cutters? A metal press from immersive engineering, or we could make a tinker's cast... Wow, limited options here on this. I do not like that. And then we would have to use, or we'd have to use this guy from Create to make that. So either of these options sounding pretty good for automation. Um, immersive engineering can be real slow, and so. Hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna give this some thought, and uh, once I get some automation set up for those other parts, then I will check back in with you guys. All right, guys. So I was able to set up some automation for this. Now, if you need these like brass sheets, you're gonna need a lot of these different sheets. So you're gonna need iron sheets. You're gonna need copper sheets. You're gonna need brass sheets. So in order to make those, you can use this multi servo press. Now this isn't as interesting as doing it like with Create or something. But if you are like me and you tend to uh, use a lot of tech mods, um, then this is actually pretty handy. With these speed upgrades, the flux linkage amplifier, it actually is pretty fast. 
So I was able to kind of whip through most of those plates and get what we needed. Now I did actually already test this to make sure that we're getting enough force and we are. So now all we have to do is just put in the ingredients. Uh, I think we're going to need this capacitor here. We're going to put these coils on the outside and we're going to put our brass sheets around here. And then we're going to put our rod in the middle and hey, it's working. It's very, very slow. And uh, that's okay, though. At least we got it. So we're going to need seven of these. This will be number two. Now, whenever we hook up these electron, um, these uh, electric motors, I don't know why is that so hard for me to remember. Whenever we hook up these electric motors behind this guy, we'll be able to crank up the RPMs to like 80. So it's going to be quite fast. It's going to be pretty fast. When we start crafting the Patrick Star, it's actually going to be pretty crazy how fast it is. We could even crank it up more if we wanted to, but 80 RPMs is pretty fast. It's just it's going to go real fast. So noise. All right, let me. Uh, I'll spend some time getting the rest of these crafted up, and then uh, meet back up with you when that's done. All right, guys. So let's see if we can get this thing powered up. What do you say? So in order to crank up the RPMs on this, you just equip the uh, wrench from Create, and then you just scroll your mouse wheel up, and that will get it to where we want it. Okay, now we got these at 80. Now we're going to put a cable off of each one of these guys. And might not be the prettiest setup you've ever seen, but it's going to work. All right, so we got flux point. Now we're about to turn these bad boys on. I'm not sure how much energy they use. Okay, very little. 525 FE per tick. Yeah, we'll take that. I may have put this too close. Oh, boy. Um, let's see. Now I need some cogs. We have nine of them. We're probably going to need more than that. Um, so I think this might be too close. Look how fast that is. Um, kind of had to put these like this because see how the one so the cog on this side is turning to the left and the cog in the middle is turning to the right. So yeah, that's kind of that's kind of why we had to space out the cogs. Hey, come on now. Um, I think we're going to put this cog right here. we put a cog right... There we go. Then we'll come over here. And just, we can peek around the corner. That on there. That on there. Okay, we're going to need a couple more cogs. Fortunately, we've got this auto-craftable... That be enough? Maybe. Okay. Um, let's see if we can get a better look over here. Okay, we need one more cog inside there. Okay. Now they're all connected. They're all linked up. I don't know. Oh. Hey, it's working. So now we've got our star powered up and ready to craft some stuff, I think. Hopefully this will work. Okay, so now the next step is going to be we're going to want to auto-craft the Patrick star. So the first thing we're going to need to be able to do that is we're going to have to create some patterns for all the concrete that we need. So let us get into that, shall we? So uh, let me just drop some things off. That I'm probably not going to need for a bit. And here, got a little too much stuff in my inventory. And then I like to keep some of these things in my backpack that I use on a regular basis. Okay. So the first 
pattern we're going to need is going to be uh, the pink pattern, I think. Let's pull up Patrick Star just to take a quick look. So hit A. Yeah. Hit A on that guy to add him to our favorites. So we've got pink concrete, and then we've got pink concrete powder. And then we've got magenta concrete, magenta concrete powder. So let's get those four items. Concrete. So we want pink concrete powder. So we'll hit R on that guy. We're going to hit this. We already have a pattern for all of these. So all we have to do is create the pattern here. And then we want the pink concrete. And we want to use the water essence because we have a ton of that. And that makes it really easy to make concrete. So we've got that. Now we want the magenta. And what we have is the purple already. But what we want is the magenta concrete powder. OK, and the magenta concrete. And use the essence, please. Thank you. All right, so we've got those four. Now we're going to need, and that pretty much makes up the majority of all of these for the top half. And then after that, we're going to want green concrete powder, green concrete, lime concrete. And that is it. So green concrete powder, green concrete. So we'll just hit R on this guy. Oh, wait, we're out of patterns. Yeah. Pattern. Just give me a stack of those, please. Okay, we got a stack of patterns. Throw these in here. And now we want to go back to our concrete. And we want con green concrete powder. So we're going to hit R, not T, R on that guy. And that's going to give us the powder. And then we're going to want green concrete. And that's going to work. And then we're going to want the, the last one is the lime concrete, I believe. Yes. And we're going to have to make the powder in order to make that first. So we'll get the lime concrete powder and then lime concrete. And that looks good. OK, so now we've got these recipes for the concretes good to go. So the next thing we're going to want to do is uh, we're going to need a crafter. So let's just make a netherite crafter. We'll make one of these. It's, our, it's the fastest thing we can make right now. We can actually make the creative crafter now, by the way, uh, but we're going to be using unobtainium ingots to make that. And I'm not. I don't want to use my, my unobtainium just yet. Uh, okay, cool. So we've got netherite uh, crafter. Now we're going to need modular routers. Um, we're going to need some deployer sender modules. So we'll just take all of these. We're not going to need quite that many, but we're going to want the speed upgrade. I don't think we're going to need the stack upgrade, but we're going to throw it in anyway. Um, and then we're going to need a few more, or we're just going to need one router, actually. And then we're going to need a barrel. And a pipe. Oh, I know, the dreaded the dreaded pipe word. Trying not to use pipes um, during this playthrough, I really would like to just use routers for everything. Um, but unfortunately, when you have multiple ingredients like this for a recipe, uh, we'll have to put them into a barrel first. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is set up a recipe for Patrick Star. And really, what all we need to do is kind of do this manually. So we're going to have to count how many pink concretes there are. So there's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Uh, one more time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, that looks correct. So we're going to need eleven 
pink concrete. So we're going to take a pink concrete, we're going to put him right here, and we're going to adjust the number to 11. Okay, now we're going to look at, at this guy, and we're going to see how many pink concrete powders we need. So we're going to need one, two, three, four, five. And that looks like that's it. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so we can just go ahead and uh, we'll just craft a couple of these real quick. So we need one, two, three, four, five. Set that. Okay. And the next thing we're going to need is how many magenta. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. One more time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Okay, so that looks correct. So hard to see. <laughs> I know. Thirteen of these. That's okay. Next, we're going to need magenta concrete powder. And for that, we're going to need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, we're going to need eight magenta concrete powder, just craft one of these. So we're going to put down eight. It's nice, perfect. Um, then we're going to need how many green concrete powder? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, eight of those. Let's craft us one of these, eight of those. Then we're going to need um, just the green concrete. How many of those do we need? We're going to need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of those as well. And that's convenient. Craft one of these, eight of those. And then last but not least, the lime, which looks like it's just going to be two. So we'll just craft these. It's going to give us eight of those. And then we're going to put this here and we're going to change it to two. OK, so that should be everything we need to make the Patrick star. Make sure there's no fluids. So we click. We've, now we've got our pattern. And also I realized I don't want to use the sender module here. Actually, I want to use, it's been a while since I've done this, but I think we're actually going to use the distributor module because this will actually allow us to send multiple items to different locations from this one module. And I think we're going to need one for each color. Um, Wait, do I have everything I need to make that? Yes, I do. So I make a pattern for that. I don't have that currently. I'll put this in here. And then we'll go back to modular. And we're going to want eight of these. Please start that. And we've got eight of those. Is that right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight colors. OK, I think that's right. All right, so now we're going to take this over here. Uh, one other thing we're going to need, actually, I'm going to go ahead and turn this off real quick, like. Um, uh, one way to take it off, turn it off, is just to break it. There we go. Okay, so there's a lot of energy stored up in the thing, and that's fine. Um, we're also going to need redstone, or excuse me, refined storage transmitter receiver. 
Yeah, we're gonna find get a transmitter, get a receiver, get a networking card. Okay, we got those items. Okay, we're going to set down our transmitter just right here. We're getting a big pile of transmitters now. Yep, it's one of the one of the downsides of the transmitter receiver. It can only be linked to one one receiver. So, okay, uh, we're going to set this right. Where do I want to set this? All right. So after thinking about this a little bit more, I think I want to set this up actually behind the star. So I need to grab some concrete and put that here. Uh, yeah, we're just going to put it like right behind it. I think this makes sense. So we'll just kind of leave a space there for our point, and I'm going to put the receiver right here, and we'll right-click it with our networking card, and I will have to take this over here and put it in our, our transmitter. And now we're going to put the crafter right here, and uh, what did I do with my tool. Okay, so I'm going to turn this so that it's facing that way. And now we're going to need this barrel to go right here. And we're going to put the router right here. And we're going to take a pipe and run the pipe like this. And then we're going to pull out of the pipe like so. We're going to put the pipe upgrade in there. And we're going to put the speed upgrade in here. We're not going to use the stack upgrades because we're going to be doing individual items. Uh, that looks good. So I'm going to put the pattern in here. I'm going to take the point and I'm going to put it right back here. Okay, so that should be powered up now. Okay, so that's where our router is going to sit. And the other thing I need to grab is some range upgrades. Uh, let's grab those. And now I'm going to um, I need some more range upgrades. OK, so we're going to do one at a time. So the first thing we got to do is put this to whitelist. Add some range upgrades. I'm not going to need that many. We'll do 12. Whitelist, 12. Round robin. Transfer out of router. OK. So one second. I have to pull up the a picture of this on my other monitor. OK, so we've, we're going to start off with the pink concrete. So that's going to go here, 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 and then again on this side. And it's going to go also here. Uh, wait, did that? Okay, yeah, that's a max of eight. So that's all that, that it can do. Um, now actually we need some concrete. And we're going to need one of each of these. So we're going to need pink powder, pink concrete, magenta concrete, um, green concrete, green concrete powder, lime concrete. OK, so this is for the pink concrete. And that one is set up to do that. So the rest of the pink is going to be three more places. So we'll go ahead and throw him in here. Grab the next one, make sure it's set to whitelist, add some range upgrades. 
I don't know if that's going to be enough. That may be a problem, but we'll see. Um, set him to pink concrete. And then we're going to set him to be right here, here, and here. Okay, and we're going to put him in here. We're going to grab another one. We're actually going to need one more of these. Um, okay, so next we're going to do the pink concrete powder, and that's going to be here, um, there. It's going to come down one here, and it's going to go over one here, and then it's going to be also right here. And that is all of the pink concrete powder. Pink concrete powder. We didn't grab. Didn't grab that one. Uh, pink concrete powder. Okay, so pink concrete powder there. Some range upgrades. Um, like so. Okay, now let's grab the next one. So pink concrete powder's done. Now let's do the magenta concrete, which I think is gonna take two cards because it's more than eight. So one here, one here, and then I'll go over here, 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 and then also right here and here. And that is five, six, seven. So we can do one more right here. It's going to be a magenta concrete. Put in some range upgrades. Uh, running out of range upgrades. Hopefully that won't be enough. Um, actually, let me just craft some more of those real quick. Uh, at modular range to craft some of these. And just give me a bunch. There we go. Okay. So we'll just put that in there. And let's try to keep them consistent, I guess. Okay. Doing 12 in each one, I guess. Um, oh, wait, 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 wait. White list. Okay. All right. So the next one is going to be the continuation of the magenta concrete. So it's going to go here and here, and here, here, and here. And that should be good. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Uh, that looks good. OK, so next we're going to do, we've got pink concrete, pink powder. Now we're going to do the magenta powder concrete. So that's going to be here here, a, not there, and let's see, and it also be so weird, right here and here and here, and three beneath that, and I think that is it, double checking, that looks correct. Magenta concrete powder. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. White list. Um, I forgot to make this one white list too. Apparently, let's double check all of these. Oh, got another one. White list. Okay, so that is the into concrete powder. So we've got all the pinks done. So now we just need to do the green concrete powder, which is going to be right here, 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 and here. And then the same thing on the other side, here, 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 here. This is going to be whitelist, green concrete powder, 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 12. Okay, that looks good. And we're definitely gonna need another one of these. Okay, so green concrete now. So we're gonna put him here and here and here. 
one right here in the groin region, one right here and here, and here and here. It's going to be the green concrete. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. White list. And one more of those modules. At modular. One more of these, please. Uh, okay, got it. Now it's going to be the lime, and that's going to be it. The lime is going to be right here and here. Lime concrete powder. 12 whitelist. <sighs> We're almost there. I think that's everything. Um, let's give her a go and see what happens. Hopefully this will work. Um, Patrick. Here we go. We're going to execute the craft. Re oh, it's working. It's kind of working. Is it going to work? It's working. Ooh. And there we have it. Uh, we finally got the Patrick star. And now we got it. Quest completed. Wow. Okay. Well, now you know how to automate the Patrick star and we can make as many of these as we want. So, uh, that's nice. Um, I'll just make another one just because it's so pretty to watch it. I'll just hit start on that. And it just the route, the routers are just doing their magic thing or the router is just doing its magic thing back there. And it's so nice to watch that. And it's really fast. Sweet. Well, there it is guys. We have automated the Patrick star. That's the first item in our, um, it's going to go right there in our ATM star. So nice. Now we just got to fill in the rest of this and it's going to be amazing. We're getting closer one item at a time. All right, guys, I think that's actually going to do it for today's episode. Uh, I know it might be a little bit of a shorter episode, um, but I think it was actually a good one. And so I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope you guys learned something about how to automate Patrick Star and also how to automate Botania. If you do have any questions, please, of course, leave me a comment below. Be happy to address anything. Maybe I missed something. I did something wrong. Please do let me know. I uh, just want to thank you guys so much. Um, please do like and subscribe as always. Would greatly appreciate that. And in the next episode, I think we're going to be doing auto enchanting. And I was going to try to fit that in in today's episode, but that really needs to be an episode by itself because it is a pretty complicated process. And once we get that going, it's going to take some time to get our enchantments to a pretty high level. But... We need to go ahead and do that now, and I think this is going to be a good next step for us. So look forward to that, and I will see you guys in the next episode. Take care now.